Hello guys, welcome back. In this video, let us see and observe the major difference about the phase maker as well as Petrov. We need to understand these major differences in order to select appropriate service based on your requirement. So first, let us understood in which purpose, which service do we use. Both of these services actual purpose is in order to access ML models in real time applications. From these services actually you can able to access ML models from AWS to your real time applications. Okay. Let's say if I am accessing my ML models for processing from lambda function. So during that scenario, let's say if I want to access this sage maker related ML models, then do I need to do anything before accessing a model? Yes. Already available ML model is not there in sage maker. If you want to access any ML model from phase maker, then you must need to deploy a model. You must need to deploy a model in phase maker. In phase maker, you first need to deploy your model. Then, then only you can use it to access this phase maker ML model. In order to deploy, you need that model, right? Yes. So if you use this Sage Maker, there is an option for applications and IDE. There you have Studio option as well as a Notebook Instances option. Through them, you can able to create your own. That is, you can able to build your own ML model, or you have already pre-built. You have already pre-built models also available in Sage Maker. You can even use them inside your code to deploy that model. Already available models also you can able to deploy. Those are available in Jumpstart. Those you can able to use and those you can able to deploy as well. So before deploying, let's say you have a requirement of training that model with your data, with your company data. If you want to train that model, that also possible in Sage Maker. That fine tuning is also possible in Sage Maker. You can able to create your own model from scratch, or you can use Jumpstart model. And then you can able to train that model with your data and then you can able to deploy it. So like this, you can able to create a ML model in Sage Maker. When a model is deployed, then that model related endpoint will be created for you. By using that endpoint only, you can able to access your model. So this is the procedure if you use Sage Maker. In Sage Maker, if you observe, you have fine gain, fine grain control over building your model, training your model, as well as deploying your model. Then you will get the endpoint. You use that endpoint in your local code. That is either it may be Lambda. Let's say if you are using AWS service that is a Lambda to access the Sage Maker related ML model that you created, then you use this endpoint there. So in this way, actually you use this Sage Maker. When do we use Sage Maker? If you want, if you have a requirement of managing full life cycle of your ML model, if the purpose is to manage full ML model, you want to manage full ML model life cycle. 
then this is the best choice for you in AWS. There you can able to use IDEs or else application related studio notebooks. There you can able to build or use any pre-build model. Then if you have requirement to train, then you can train it. Then you can deploy it or else you simply start from here by taking a pre-existing model, jumpstart model, and then you deploy it. You create that endpoint and you can able to use it in your Lambda function for your real time purpose. Now, so what about this bedrock? So when do we use this bedrock? In this bedrock, if you want to use any ML model, this bedrock already provides you multiple ML models, already available ML models it will provide. It will provide you the ML models which are already created by Amazon as well as uh, that is Titan models. Those are created by AWS that is Amazon. Those Titan models it will provide as well as it also provides you Llama models, meta created those Llama models. So those models also it will provide like that. It will provide you variety of already marketplace available models, standard models. It will provide you standard already available ML models. It will provide you with each model is having their own model ID. Each model is having their own model ID. By using that model ID only, if you want to access any model in your real time, that is in Lambda function, that you can able to do that. You just need to access this model ID of that model. You, you just need to select appropriate model already available appropriate model that best fits for your need is the first thing that you need to do in bedrock. Then for that model, for every model, there will be a model ID that you need to copy by using that model only. You can able to access that model in your code that is in your compute, either it may be from Lambda. Here, if you see, if you observe bedrock in bedrock, there is no fine grain access here. Only we are accessing already available foundational models by their model ID. So in order to access any model here, you need to enable that model. Here you need to enable modal access. At first you need to enable that modal access. That's it. You just open that particular model in you have modal access option is there. So whenever I'm telling you the lab there, I'll show you in that modal access. You just need to enable specific model that you want to use. So that's it. So if you enable that model, that model is available to you to use based on that mo model ID. You can able to access that foundational model in your real time applications, either it may be through Lambda function. So here in this bedrock, we can directly access already available foundational models. We can directly access foundational models. We don't need to pre-train them. We simply need to access them by their model IDs. That's it. So I hope you are understood. When do we use bedrock compared to SageMaker? If you don't want to manage your model related life cycle, let's say if you don't want to build or pre-build any model or train any model or deploy any model, before accessing that, then you simply copy the ID of your model and then you need to enable that model and you can directly use that foundational model 
in your application code now let's compare one more important parameter that is cost so obviously cost will matter right yeah so coming to cost here in sage maker you will be charged for this building you will be charged for building the model training the model so not directly will be charged for building training so during this scenario during this training that training related storage as well as compute you need to use some resource right yeah so for that you will be charged you will be charged for training and storage training storage and compute for that you will be charged that is first point and then based on number of requests that encounter this end point after you creating your model based on number of requests to end point you will be charged here in the sage maker whereas if you consider under bedrock there you will be charged for number of requests that are made to your modal id here you are not going to create or train and deploy any model in bedrock so that's why for that related storage and compute is not you are using so that's why you are not charged for those in bedrock you will be only charged for the number of requests made to your model id so for that only since you are using this model id in your application in order to get some suggestions or content related response so you will be charged for that number of requests only in bedrock now let's also discuss one more important parameter that is response accuracy you may use this sage maker related model or this bedrock related model then the output accuracy is also important right yeah so let's discuss about that point as well so any model you can take that is developed by either sage maker by your own from scratch or you used the pre built model like that you developed the ml model or else if you take already available foundational model from bedrock so either case in either case there will be high chance of getting response accuracy that is a response accuracy your clients may complain to you that they are getting inappropriate that is not accurate content so for the request their your users might get inaccurate content that is less accurate then you need to improve you need to improve response accuracy right yes so if you use sage maker related ml model if you are using a ml model that is created in the sage maker then what are the chances for me to improve this accuracy response accuracy basically the reason for reduced response accuracy is due to poor prompting by your clients now in order to provide high response accuracy or improve the response accuracy so what are the ways do i have in the sage maker in order to provide high response accuracy we basically prefer prompting prompting techniques we basically prefer prompting techniques so this basically done in both that is if you use this bedrock related ml service or this sage maker related ml service 
this prompting technique we can able to use in order to find in order to convert or in order to design our model to provide some accurate responses in order to improve response accuracy we can able to use this prompting techniques if you use this sage maker then you can have one more chance that is fine tuning by fine tuning your model with your data you can able to improve the response accuracy related to your content related to your content your users will get the response because you are fine tuning the already available model with your data so that's why they can able to get the response based on your personalized content in this way these are the two ways to improve the response accuracy in sage maker you can also have the ability to fine tune it whereas in bedrock you only have the ability to use this prompting technique to improve this response in the sage maker you have this prompting technique as well as a fine tuning technique to improve the response if you observe updating the model here since you are building the model training the model and deploying the model you can have ability to update it here whereas here whoever the provider of your foundational model he can able to update that version already available version you are not uh, having that access or you are not uh, having that foundational model access code access to update it you just uh, using the model id model you just using the model by using the model id in your application so that's the basic comparison between these two services that is bedrock as well as amazon sage maker so based on this comparison you may choose what service that best fits for your current requirement in your project and you can select that service and you can create or you can use such ml model in your project and you can able to fulfill your client's needs and you can able to achieve task outcomes based on your requirements i hope you understood the major difference between selecting this sage maker and bedrock in real time i hope this video is useful if you feel this video is useful then please like share subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates thanks for watching again see you back in the next video with another interesting topic until then bye bye guys